The burning wheel. Has anyone here, I'm just curious, raise your hands if you've heard of the burning wheel. Oh, no, okay. Not All right. Zero. This is the game. It's the game. We have a little bit of time, short story time. So many of you have probably had that sort of the feminine mystique, but it's the gamer mystique, that you're playing D&D &D with your friends. Not having a good time at that point, because combat's in a sixth hour, and, and you don't really have any input in the combat anymore. And you know that guy, right? There's always that guy who tries to make his own, his hack on D&D, &D, or he makes his own role. Guys, I fix D&D, &D. we use D30s instead of D20s. <laughs> yeah, he never fixes it. Never fixes it. And if you go to a gaming convention, especially smaller gaming conventions, those guys have tables everywhere. They're trying to come, come play you. my game, come play my game, please. I'm you gotta avoid those people like Grim Death. <laughs> so I was at this convention in New Jersey called like UberCon. I went by myself and I'm walking around. One of those guys grabbed me, and the next thing I know, I'm sitting at his table, ready for some misery. And the game was actually really cool. I'd never seen anything like it before. So I was playing DD &D under the philosophy of yeah, all games are the same bullshit as DD. I gotta play something. Right? I'm not going to play one of those weird hacks these weirdos made. Right? Play enough of those Everyone knows D&D, we're sticking with it. So I come back, I'm like, you got to come to this con if that weird guy's in there again. We're going to play his game. Yeah, listen, I don't trust any weird guy's game. It probably is awful. <laughs> I think the only game to play so you can make fun of me later. So we go back and we play this well, game. Well, you know, I have a, you know, but no, you don't knock it if you haven't tried it policy. Yeah. Right? It's like I haven't tried Australia. I didn't form an opinion on it until now. <laughs> <laughs> that was ominous. <laughs> So we also grab our friend Pete, who played Mustafa bin Mustafa. And we all go back. And this is before there. he was Mustafa bin Mustafa, by the way. So we get there, and we're ready to play this game. And the guy, the guy Lou Crane, who made this game, hands his three character sheets, and goes away, and says, I can go to the bathroom, I'll be right back, and you play. So, so we're waiting, we're looking at our character sheets. Do you have a picture of the character sheet? I don't have a picture of the character okay, sheet. Okay, so at the top of the burning wheel character sheet, the first thing, the first thing in the character sheet is beliefs and instincts, three of each. And it pretty much says on my character sheet, you are the human thief. You need to get money or else the mafia boss is going to chop off your feet. <laughs> I think it was arms. Doesn't matter. Hands, something. He was going to chop something off and I didn't want that to happen. I'm playing the elf because that's what I do. I'm, that kind of, I'm one of those people. Uh, the elf. I love nothing more than to sit for four hours role playing high elven court bullshit. <laughs> so I'm reading the elf sheet and it's like, that dwarf's family abandoned that sword and they will not get it back ever. Your uncle, blah, 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 blah. And I look at Pete, who hasn't even looked at his character. Who's the sheet, dwarf? And I'm like, you don't deserve that sword. <laughs> we don't know the rules of this game. All we read is the little belief section on the character sheet. We don't know how to play this game. We don't even know what kind of dice so we So he looks need. at me, he looks at his character sheet, and goes, looks back at me and says, Your father betrayed my father. <laughs> This starts getting pretty heated, and Luke Crane, we realize he's back, so we stop, we're like, okay, we're ready to start, and he says, oh, proceed. <laughs> the game tricked us into role-playing, just from the character sheet. Oh, and by the way, that shit isn't just like flavor text, there's rules about that stuff. Right? There are so many things, we don't have time to get into every aspect of Burning Wheel. Burning Wheel is like the, it's a big book, right? Most of these other games we've told you about, except maybe Mouse Guard, which is most, sort of Burning Wheel based, are little tiny books, right? Like little tiny mice. Yeah, Burning Wheel is a big book. About half of it is just the character, like, life pads and things for making characters, but it's still big. You need to be hardcore to learn all the rules of Burning Wheel. I don't even know all the rules of Burning Wheel, right? But you can play with just pages 1 through 75 and ignore the rest. So here we're going to go through a bunch of the kind of core mechanics of this game that are interesting and that you might find enlightening. Yeah, yeah and the other reason we use this game is because it's the one we're most familiar with. This is the one we play every other week. And also because a lot of these mechanics that are in Burning Wheel, it's sort of a collection of all the good things from all the indie RPGs. I mean, if we want to sit here for days just talking about indie RPGs, there's like there's thousands of them. But this one really grabs like sort of like the best of out of everything. So uh, item number one, traits. You play the D&D game where you write down, my character is six foot eight, his eyes, he's an elf. His eyes are, I guess, purple with gold flecks. I guess that's the popular elf yeah. eye color. Does that ever matter? No, it never matters. You can make it matter in the sort of, you know, make up your own rules way, but there's nothing in the book that makes that matter. So in this game, you can say your character's hair. It doesn't mean anything. If you buy the trait Harry, which costs a point, your character is Harry. He exemplifies Harry. If it ever matters in the game, Harry is now a mechanic for him. So you write Harry on your character sheet. Anything in your character sheet matters in the game. So you're sitting there, and it's like you want to make a disguise as a gorilla, right? And I'm like, it says Harry in my character sheet. I want an advantage die. And the GM is like, yeah, you're Harry. There's a plus one to disguise skill test on because you're Harry. 
So suddenly, you, you're forced, you don't have that many points to spend on this stuff. Suddenly, instead of writing down all this crap about your uncle Calvin Blackstead, you write down the parts of your character that matter the most. It's too easy to make a smorgasbord character in D&D. &D. You don't write out this big, long history. You just put in the important bits, and everything else will get filled in as you play. What matters more, that my character's fat or that he's hairy? And I have to decide, and whichever one I pick, that's gonna be in the game. It's on my character sheet. It <laughs> matters. It can also come to bite you. It'd be like, oh, the boat's getting a little, you know, get a little water in that boat. Uh, yeah. And Rim, you're kind of fat. <laughs> Oh, fun. you're running out of food, and Ram, you're kind of fat. <laughs> <laughs> Just get back to my uncle, Kelvin Blackstaff. In this game, you can spend 15 resource points and tell the Blackstaff, this great and powerful wizard, is your goddamn uncle. It oh, he's a wizard? I thought he was me. He's a wizard. Okay. You can roll dice to make him appear. You go to the game master and say, Kelvin Blackstaff is at, happens to be at this inn. He has to let you roll dice to make that happen. Yeah, you, it might be really hard to make that succeed, but the more points you put into it during character creation, the easier it'll be. Now, here's where you can see where this game is going. It costs 15 points for Kelvin Blackstaff, the great wizard, to be my uncle. 14 points for him to also hate me. Oh yeah, he's definitely at this inn. Shit. It's really easy to make him show up at the inn. One point easier, but... It's cheaper to bring people in that hate you than like you, but simultaneously, it's not that much cheaper because people who hate you are just as interesting as people who like you. <laughs> Failure and success are equally interesting. How many of you, when you tell the story of a D&D game you played, you tell the story where you fucked up and the town got exploded? Yeah. Freaking natural 20, you chop the dragon's head off. Not an exciting story, right? Natural 1, and something horrible happened. That's the story that you tell, right? And Burning Wheel makes that happen every time. Because like Mouse Guard, right, every roll matters. In D&D, &D, you want to climb over the town wall to sneak in, right? Alright, I roll my d20. You roll your climb test, okay? You succeed or fail. If you succeed, you get into the town by climbing over the wall. If you fail, alright, you fail. Maybe there's falling damage? Maybe? Right. In this game, if you fail, failure matters. Failure scars your character. If right, you so get stabbed with a sword, you might never walk again. Right. There are two rules that make this happen. Rule number one is any failed roll has a consequence. If there wasn't a consequence, you should have just said yes. It's called say yes or roll the dice. If a character wants to do something, climb over the wall. The GM either says, yes, you climb over the wall, continue, right? Or roll the dice, we're going to find out. And if you succeed, you succeed. And if you fail, oh, do you fail. Something bad happens when you fail. It might not be immediate. Right? But if something bad will happen for every failed roll, there will be a consequence, and then usually another roll to deal with the consequence, right? Rule number two, let it ride, right? D&D, &D, I take 10, I take 20. Let it ride is like, no, you failed to climb over the wall. You may not try to climb over the wall again unless it's a completely different circumstance, right? Like you got a rope, or you, it's now daytime in the town, someone's helping you, or- Never you know. again, the game master continuing to roll, make you roll stealthy until you eventually fail, and he can do the thing he's been planning to do all along. Right, it's like, you succeeded at your stealthy, you are now stealthy until the situation changes pretty significantly. You're just hidden, period, end of story. Now right. we're only about five minutes left, so we're gonna move a little more quickly. Three more really interesting mechanics. One, currency, buying stuff, that's a stat. I roll that just like everything else. Do I want to buy a sword? Well, roll some dice. Yes, I now have a sword. Nope, I couldn't afford it. Advanced oh, you couldn't afford it, by the way. You now have less money. You're taxed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I spent all my money. Yeah, there are consequences to failing to buy something, too. Advancement. You advance by failing. It's just like Final Fantasy III or Ultima IV. If you want to get good at sword, sword, you got to fail at rolling sword a bunch of times, and then sword it, gets better. You hard. have to fail at sword to make sword get better, just like the real world with practicing. There's actually practicing rules also. Three, there is a really interesting combat system that's really crunchy, and it has this thing where you simultaneously script three actions, then you reveal them one by one. Yeah, like, I, I, you know, I slash, and then I well, slash, and then I step back, and then I guard. Yeah, well, I scripted uh, run away, run away, run away, whatever we did. There is an equally crunchy system for social conflict. I scripted a point, then a rebuttal, then an incite. I did incite, incite, dismiss. Your Mom. mom's a whore, your mom's a duck, get out of here. <laughs> so suddenly, that's a really that, powerful attack. If, if there's that guy with the bolt stuck on his head, we want to talk about it, we roll literally the same number of dice as we want to kill the guy. And there's also tons and tons of skills to help with that arguing, right? My favorite of which is Ugly Truth, best skill in the game. But there's also persuasion, oratory, coarse persuasion, and... Stentorious rhetoric, stentorious persuasion, stentorious... The stentorious ones are all for the dwarves, mostly. <laughs> Burning Wheel is the be-all, end-all of everything we're talking about right here.
So if I'm going to tell the story of my character here, I'm not going to talk about my strength stat. That's not interesting. And it turns out that that's the only part of my character that is character, that is story, who he knows, what he's done, where he's going, why he fights for what he fights for. That's it. And that whole character sheet, that's it. Yeah, so, you're trying to tell me this is a role-playing game, but what percentage of it has anything to do with role-playing? That percent. And most of that is a picture. Now, you've been